So as we get started today this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point just look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. It's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're gonna do the over the body sash. So the sash goes over top of your shoulder and down the other side and we have some information for you uh, for the adult size. So in the adult size you can google this as well to find the different size sashes that people can wear and we have that information here available on the pattern as well. So this is actually a pretty neat idea and we have a diagram on page number three and we're gonna start off in the point and we're gonna make our way through to the bottom Body. So the body is just this one row. I just put it in there twice so that you get that. So you just go back and forth and when you're ready to decrease this is what it will be. The, this here section and the finishing section is about two inches just for sizing and uh, it's actually pretty straightforward. So the thing that you gotta pay attention to is just getting yourself started and building out. We're going to collapse this by one stitch so that every row is exactly the identical so that you can watch TV and just uh, plow away at this and work your way throughout this pattern. So it's a really neat idea. If you like it wider than what's here, once you understand the, the increase that you'll have, you'll have right up here. Once you understand this increase, you can go as many increases as you want as long as that when you're ready to start the all rows that you just are going to eliminate out a stitch. So that's just something that you can keep in mind. So you can choose any yarn that you wish. Make sure the yarn complements the hook and you can begin. And so I'm going to be using a size five millimeter H hook and some Red Heart Super Saver as my demonstration for today. So let's begin. We're going to create a slip knot. Just keep a little bit of a longer tail so that you can put a, uh, a tapestry needle into that to be able to hide it later. So you're going to chain two one and two and what I need you to do is in the first chain from the hook uh, that is there. Okay so second chain from the hook which is the first one that you started with. I need you to put in two single crochets and then we're gonna turn our work and then begin row number two. We're doing the moss stitch today so this is the, something that's been factored into this pattern. So you're going to chain up one and you'll single crochet in the very first one chain one and then single crochet in the very next single uh, single crochet that's there. And therefore you've just now added a stitch and so the stitches basically are the single crochet. There's a chain one space and a single crochet. So just consider each space and uh, sing, uh, each space and stitch as a stitch. So let's just turn our work and move on to number three. In row number three you're going to chain one and you'll put a single crochet in the first single crochet or single crochet stitch. You're then going to chain one and in the next chain one space single crochet. Then you're going to chain one and then single crochet in the very next single crochet stitch. And turn your work and that was row number three. So I want you to be paying attention to what you think is common. Okay, so the increase is always gonna be the same until you get to the size that you want. So in row number four you're gonna chain up one. You'll put in a single crochet in the first single crochet and then chain one. This chain one that we're putting in is what is causing the increase. So single crochet in the next chain one space, single or uh, chain one and then jump to the next chain one space and then chain one and single crochet into the last single crochet. And that was row number four. So the outsides of the edging is always gonna be doing the increase until we stop and then we just maintain what's in the middle. Just turn our work and do number five. In row number five you're going to chain one and you'll single crochet in the first stitch. Chain one and you're doing an increase so you're gonna go immediately to the first chain one space you'll run into. Single crochet chain one and then single crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one, single crochet in the next chain one space and that's the one just before the corner and we're still increasing. So we'll chain one and then single crochet in the last. And that was row number five. Let's turn our work and begin number six. In row number six still increasing chain one, single crochet in the first. Chain one which is going to create this um, the expansion. So single crochet in the next single uh, space. Chain one and just maintain the top. So just skip over to the next space. Single crochet and then chain one and etc. And please do this all the way across. And so you're paying attention to the beginning and the ending. So this is a space before the end. So we're still increasing. So chain one 
and single crochet in the very last. And that was row number six. So let's turn our work and do number seven. Number seven, chain one, single crochet in the first and we're still increasing. So chain one and start in with the first space. So single crochet and then maintain the stitching going across. So chain one, go to the next space, chain one, go to the next space, single crochets and you're doing that all the way across. And when you get to the very last one, we're still increasing. So chain one and single crochet in the last single crochet and that was row number seven. Turn our work and continue. In row number eight, chain one, we're still increasing. So single crochet in the first, chain one and then come to the immediately to the first space, single crochet and then chain one and just maintain what you already know going across. The whole goal for this particular sash is that once you get moving on this thing is that everything in the middle is pretty much the same. We're still increasing so I'm in the last space before the end so chain one and single crochet in the last one. And that was number eight. Turn your work and let's begin number nine. Number nine is our last increase and we're gonna start. So chain up one, single crochet in the first, chain one, single crochet in the first space and then maintain the middle as you know it. So if you've done the granite stitch or the moss stitch before this is the same thing. So the size of yarn that you're using and the hook size will determine the thickness of your sash. So make sure you come into the space before the end, chain one and then come in right into the end and that was row number nine in the increase it has now finished and now we just have to change one thing and then all rows throughout the body of it until the decrease once again has to be done. Next. As we hit number 10 we wanna make sure that it's easy to enough to follow. So if you can look away and watch television and know that every line is gonna be the same then that's what we need to do. So this row that we're about to do number 10 is going to be that row that will set us up to have that, that power. So what I need you to do is just chain up one and single crochet in the first and single crochet in the first chain one space. And now you're gonna start jumping across. So chain one and then come to the next space and you'll do that all the way across until we get close to the other side. So what we're gonna do is eliminate out one stitch so that every row will be the same. So I'm in the, the second last space. So there's a space here and here. So this is the second last one. So once you're here what I need you to do is just chain one and then go immediately to the very last stitch. So skip over the stitch and the chain one and just go there and that will eliminate one stitch for you so that each and every row can be exactly the identical. We're gonna move on to all rows now until you're ready to decrease on the other side. So turn your work and moving to the main body of the sash next. So all rows going forward until you decide to do a, a decrease will always be the same. So you'll see it twice in the diagram. That's just to show you that it does do the same thing back and forth. So chain up one and you'll single crochet in the first one and you'll single crochet in the first chain one space and then you start jumping. So chain up one and then jump to the next space and you'll do that all the way across. Now because we jumped that special stitch at the end of the last one will always end up doing the same thing at the very end of these rows. So here's the last space right there. So chain up one and then just immediately go to the very last one. And then turn your row and let's do this. So it's all rows, it's always the same. So chain up one, one single crochet in the first and in the first chain one space and then start jumping. So chain up one and keep on jumping across. So by eliminating out that one stitch it makes it a lot easier so that you can look away and uh, not have two rows that are, are not the same. So just as you're moving out, see these two that were side by side? So you're chaining up one, you're skipping over this one and then you just immediately go to the last one. And I'll demonstrate this row one more time because it's always the same. So turn, chain one, 
one single in the first and in the first space, chain one and etc. And you'll keep doing this until you're happy with the length of your particular sash. And then we're gonna hit the decrease next. So just remember in the last space there's two stitches left. So you chain up one, jump over the first one and just go immediately into the last. And so you just repeat all rows over and over and over until you're ready to decrease which I'm about to do in just a moment. Once you're satisfied with the length of it, so you go all rows, go as long as you need to go, then you just have to then come back to the point. So in order to start going to the first uh, row for the ending of this, we need to put that stitch back into play so that we can decrease equally. So in order to do that, we're going to chain up one and we'll single crochet in the first, chain one and single crochet into this first space. So that chain one we just put in just makes that extra stitch that we need. Then chain one and then just keep blasting all the way across to what you already know it to be. So this just put in one extra stitch at the very start of this row. So we really can start pounding the decrease in just a moment. So coming across the ending will be the same. So skipping over the next and just come out to the end. So make sure you chain one and you did that. So that was first row of the ending. Let's move on to row number two. So in row number two all the way to the very end you're eliminating out stitches on both sides. So the only difference is row number nine you'll do a th uh, three together single crochet. So when you go to start a row I need you to chain one and you're going to put the first stitch together with the, the first space. So put that one in and then put the next one in. So put it in and then you'll have three loops on the hook pull through all three and now you just made the first stitch and the space to become one stitch. So this is in our way so you're gonna chain up one and then you'll just follow the path going across. And the only difference is is that when we go to finish the other side we need to make sure the last two are put together as one. Okay. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna put the last space and the last stitch together as one stitch. And so then that gets us to where we need to go and moving on to row number three. Row number three you're gonna chain up one. So you'll put the first stitch and the next space together as one. And then maintain the pattern. So chain one and then come to the next available space chain one and keep doing that all the way to the end. So when you come to the end the next space and the final stitch will become together as one. And that was row number three. So turn your work and let's do number four. In row number four chain up one and put the first one and the first space together. Chain one and start maintaining the pattern as you know it. So it'll get faster and faster as you're eliminating out stitches. Chain one and then put the last two together. So the space and the last stitch and that was row number four. So let's turn our work and do number five. Number five chain up one and then just put the first two together. Chain one and then maintain what you already know. Okay, and then put the last two together. Turn your work and that was row number five. Let's do number six. Number six, chain up one, put the first two together, chain one and jump, chain one and keep jumping and put the last two together. Turn your work and let's do number seven. Number seven, chain up one, put the first two together, chain one, go into the next space, maintain it, chain one and then put the last two together and turn your work and let's do row number eight. Row number eight, chain one, put the first two together, chain one and then jumping over put the last two together. And this leaves three stitches on there. So turn your work and let's do number nine. 
In number nine it's gonna be a three together single crochet. So chain up one and put the first, the space and the last all together as one. And then that will conclude that. So what you wanna do at the end of this is that you wanna weave in your ends. Let's do that next. To weave in your ends just pull out and do this with any tails that you may have and use your tapestry hook and just drag it down through the stitch work. Be conscientious if you have colors in play that you don't drag the wrong colors through the wrong area. So pulling it, so you don't wanna change the shape of it and you wanna go in and out of the work a total of three times. And you'll do that with any ends that you have. So obviously your sash will be a lot longer and you'll have the points on the end and then you just use a, uh, you can try it on at any time and then just use a button to hold it down by your thighs when you're going to wear it. And also if you're gonna dance or anything like that, you may want to put like a safety pin at the top of this on, on the underside and pin it to the top of your outfit so that it doesn't slide off. So that's it for today. We hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.